Hi, my name is Amy Mozzie, and I'm with Centurion Boats. And today I'm going to introduce you to the all new 2021 RI 265. This thing is a revolution, a revolution in size, in accommodation, but not just on the big side of things. It's not just the biggest wave. It's not just the biggest boat. It doesn't just accommodate the most people. When I say a revolution, this is, this is a change in power. And suddenly, you don't see it coming, but here it is. And this thing is not just doing it on the big end, it's doing it with small refinements, functionality, things that nobody saw coming. It's innovating. This is the RI-265. It's revolution innovated. When I say that the 2021 RI-265 is a revolution, I'm saying it's a sudden change in power. But you see it coming. You see it coming because the front end of the RI-265 is like no other. This thing is branded with Centurion and it's backlit right here, front and center on the bow, so you know what's coming at you. On either side of that emblem is a Baja racing light, actually four Baja racing lights, two on either side. They are 2,400 lumens a piece. These things are bright and at 4,800 lumens a side, they'll light up any dock as well as your life when you're in this boat. But that's not where it stops as far as the distinct pieces, the little touches that are on this boat that you won't see anywhere else. I mean, look at the billet on the side. These are made, these vents are made by PTM. They're not only billet vents, they're anodized, so they're made for the rigors of water use. You've also got two different colors, several different textures. It's made to go along with this boat, and it, it really is. You've got it all the way along the side. We come to the ram fill vent, same thing. You've got this beautiful billet piece that's anodized and uh, two-toned, beautiful piece. Also, you've got a backlit ram fill logo, which is really cool at night. And you go all the way down, you've got rear vents that are a little bit of the same, but this boat looks like it was made to impress because it was, and it's gunu. You've got to check it out. So while this is a revolution in size and innovation in refinement and function, the RI-265 is also just plain stylish. The thing looks great. Engineers took their time and not only made all the edges hard, they kind of made a good mix of arcs and hard lines. It's like no other boat out there. It's one of those boats I think that you think you've always wanted but you've never seen before and I think it's that's a pretty accurate way to describe it is it's extremely different but attractive and it makes you want one. The RI-265 is built on the OptiV hull. Now this running surface is a deep V like all of the other Centurions. However, the RI-265 has had some cool changes made to it. This particular running surface has hook built into the back of the boat, which gives the back of the boat more lift and changes the running attitude. It gets the nose down further into the water. The other thing that the OptiV provides is balance. So this is a deep V boat. With, without optimization, it can be tippy. But with those rear pads in the back, these flat triangles that are on either side of the rear of the boat in the water, they create balance and optimization. So you've got the best of both worlds, really. You've got that deep V that cuts through the chop on a rough day at the lake, or that displaces more water with less ballast weight, making all of that mass of water back there for a great surf wave. But you've also got balance. You don't have to worry about three people being on one side of the boat and one person on the other and being off balance or seeing that off balance in your wave, in your wake, or just in the way that the boat rides on the water. The OptiV hull is an amazing design achievement, but the biggest, I would say, benefit from this particular hull still lies with the deep V. The deep V is 20 degrees of dead rise at the transom, which is that degree of V is 20 degrees at the transom. 
and it gets more extreme as you go towards the front of the boat. It gets up to 30 degrees of V at the front of the boat. So what that is, is it's like a, a sharp edge being able to cut through the water and that sharp edge follows the whole bottom of the boat. That's why these boats ride so well in rough water. But like I mentioned before, it also takes all of the ballast weight, which the RI-265 is available with as much as 5,850 pounds of ballast. All of that ballast weight, when it displaces the hull, that deep V basically punches a hole in the water. It creates so much displacement that then can be shaped or formed by these Quick Surf Pro blades on the back of the boat. What these do is they change a little bit of the angle that the boat is riding through the water. They change the wetted surface of the boat from side to side. So the plate goes down opposite the surf side, creating lift opposite the surf side. It kind of lifts that corner of the boat up. Then it displaces more water on the surf side corner. That's what makes your wave. When you want to switch from side to side, it's really just a touch of the screen at the helm and you can transfer in 1.8 seconds. But it's all because the running surface of the RI-265 is displacing that water created by the ballast, that displacement is created by the ballast, and then the plates in the back simply change the wave from side to side. The RI-265 comes standard with the Stinger wake plate. Now the Stinger wake plate is a plate that creates or changes the running attitude of the boat. It's essentially adding hook in and out of the running surface. So when the Stinger wake plate is down, it creates lift, more lift at the back of the boat and gets the nose of the boat down into the water. When the Stinger wake plate is up, it allows the nose of the boat or the bow of the boat to come up out of the water or allows for bow rise, as some people call it. Now this particular plate on this 265 is what we call our silent stinger. The silent stinger takes it a step further. It gives you even more functionality. The silent stinger takes the exhaust of the engine and tumbles it through a series of baffles that are built inside this plate there is also forced water induction in the bottom through four ports that are on the bottom and that tumbles through the baffles with the exhaust and essentially takes the noise of the engine down. It makes it quieter on the interior of the boat. Um, I know it's a little bit hard to believe, but it really makes a big difference. I mean, so much so that you're talking about 93 and a half decibels at the passenger seat, which is about the noise level of a kitchen dishwasher. So you can have a normal conversation and not have to be yelling all day, even while you're at surf speeds. The other piece of this is the exhaust or the excess water comes out of the plate from these three new ports in the back. Now these have been redesigned this year. What's happening when that water comes out of those ports is it's doing a couple things. It's disrupting the little line that can sometimes be created by the exhaust and end up through your surf wave. So you don't have that with this. But it's also creating something called a venturi. A venturi is like a, a, a funnel uh, and it creates a bit of suction. What it's doing is it is actually pulling the exhaust or pulling the exhaust pressure to be exact out of the engine, which is better for the engine, better for the engine's longevity as well as, as, well as the way it runs. So that's something that's to be, that has been designed into the plate for this year, which is also a new utility patent that we have on this plate. I say we, I haven't done anything. Our engineers developed this. That's the third patent we have on this plate. So we have two utility patents and a design patent. Um, this is the brainchild of our engineers here in-house and it's on almost every Centurion that leaves the factory here. It's an extremely high take option and I encourage you, even if you're not looking at the 265, visit your local dealer and find out what's really different about that silent stinger and put it on the Centurion boat you're ordering. As we move into the boat, you come to the trunk. Now the trunk is a great place for hanging out. It's a great seat. It's got cup holders on either side. And like most trunks, it stores things. I can throw my shoes in there. But the other thing about the trunk is it houses an optional ballast bag. 
Now, this boat comes from the factory or is available with 5,850 pounds of ballast. That's a lot of ballast. Don't get me wrong. That's really important, a important fact to remember about this boat. However, more importantly is the location of that ballast. So this boat has seven different ballast locations. And what I mean by that is they are evenly distributed through the boat and they're all controlled independent of one another, both filling and draining. Now why that's important is because in this boat, when you fill all of the ballast, it's so evenly distributed that it displaces the entire hull, the entire running surface, which is why our waves are so long, because we're not just displacing the rear half of the boat. And I know you've seen this when you've been at the lake. A lot of other manufacturers have about 75% of their weight behind the back seat of the boat. So their ballast weight makes the boat ride uh, bow high. And when you think about that, only half of the running surface is displacing water to create that wave. In a Centurion, and specifically the RI-265, the entire running surface is displaced to create the wave. That is why our waves are so long. So those seven different ballast locations, you've got one in the bow underneath the seats, you've got one in the walkthrough, you've got two tanks, our ram fill tanks, on either side of the lounge underneath the floor, then you've got a, a plug and play bag on either side of the engine, then you've got this optional transom bag back here in the trunk. Seven different ballast locations. Now, the ram fill tanks, they fill in 90 seconds. Everything else, it probably takes a total of four and a half minutes. But once that's done, that whole running surface is displaced and you're making waves, the best waves in the world. But beyond that, once I wanna get into the boat and get going, this is another cool thing about this trunk. So I've got a step on either side. So even though the trunk lid is open, I can still get into the boat. I can step, I can walk right over. It's easy for me to get in. So I don't have to wait. If somebody's loading or unloading from the trunk at the dock or, or just when we're swimming or coming back in the boat, I can walk right around them and step right into this. So since the RI-265's sun pad and back end of the boat is really made for hanging out they had to add this function and this feature to the boat this is one of my favorites so the lounge seat the sun pad lounge seat so i can sit back here hang out everybody else swimming um, or just hang out at the dock you know, we're not in these seats while the boat is underway, but they're so nice, so comfortable. And I can really change the angle of lean back to whatever I want. I can sit up straighter if I'd like. It's just a ratchet hinge on either side of this lean back. And when I want to stow it away, when I want to use the sun pad again and maybe lay a towel out and lay down, I've got that option as well. Um, this seat, not only is it easy to use and is super comfortable, it still looks really nice on the back of the boat and I love them. They're my favorite. So as I step into the RI-265, this walk is a little bit different than other Centurions as well. I've got this little step down. It's a fiberglass tooled part with some gator step on it, and it's a great way to step there instead of stepping on your upholstery. And it's got a clear path from that rear walkover right down to that seat. But the other piece of that is you could step on your upholstery if you want. I know, I know it's frowned upon, and those of us that are conscientious boat owners really don't want to step on that upholstery, but trust me, it can take it. This upholstery is made by Spradling. It has a 17 mil top coat, and what that means is that top coat, it's not something we can see, it's a coating. And what it does is it guards against abrasions and even things like staining, acid rain, um, UV rays, you name it, it is resilient. And yes, you could walk on it with your shoes on. I know, it's taboo, we don't do it. We don't suggest that we do it. We put tooled in pieces in the seat so you don't have to do it. But I'm telling you, this upholstery is super resilient. But maybe even more strong than the upholstery is the thread that we sew it all together with. The thread is made by Gore Tenera and it is essentially Gore-Tex. This thread is extremely resilient. We offer it in six different colors, so you can color match the thread to other colors on your interior. 
but also it is resilient against acid rain, UV rays, harsh chemicals that you could use to clean the interior of your boat, all of the above. Plus, you'll notice in our interiors, and this goes across the entire Centurion line, you'll be hard pressed to find a single stitch all by itself. In most cases, you're gonna call, see what we call a half stitch, which is actually sewn two times, or a French seam, which is on the really high stress areas, and this is sewn three times. You'll be really hard pressed to find the single stitch all by itself, because this is a stronger way to put together these upholstery pieces, and this is gonna last. And like I said, you may not wanna step on it, don't encourage the kids to do it, but you can. So not only is the interior of the RI-265 extremely comfortable, extremely resilient, it's also convertible. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, it's a convertible, duh, Amy. No, I'm not talking about a convertible top. I'm talking about the seating itself is convertible to how you use your boat. And the perfect example of that is the slide seat. So this particular slide seat has four different positions. And what I can do is just lift up on the front edge and I can go from that stowed position, which makes the whole interior a lounge. I can bring it out one. Um, let's say you have an ice chest that you're bringing with you. There, it comes with a custom Grizzly ice chest with matching gator step. I mean, that's part of the 265 package. You could set that right back there and still have a seat in front of it. You could also take this slide seat one more position forward. Let's say you wanna get more weight towards the middle of the lounge, towards the middle of the boat for the shape of your wakeboard wake or just because people wanna sit there, you've got that position too. Then I can go here. Here, I'm just more towards the center. And then one more time, I can come all the way up front. I can sit with the observer and the driver closer, maybe put the wind block in on a cold day. And we've got this little lounge that's right up front in the helm. The point of this is it's convertible and it can be whatever you need it to be and how your family wants to use it. The other great thing about this boat is what I'm revealing right here. So right here is the gator step. So this particular gator step floor is a two color gator step choice. This is our standard Centurion cut, two color. It's a two layer gator. You can choose between 15 different colors for each layer. This one has the black on the bottom and it looks like shark fin on the top. You can choose, like I said, between 15 different colors on either of those layers and you can make any combination that your heart desires. And that gator, not, it not only is it on the floor and on the riser, but it's on the deck of the boat. And I'll show you where this is really important. So on the deck of the boat, not only does it look great, not only does it tie in the design and your color choices of your RI-265, but the deck of the RI-265 is really wide and flat, and that's done on purpose. Our engineers did that, so it's a great place to step. You can board from the dock easily, especially with that gator step on there. You're not gonna slip. You've got a sure-footed position to get in and out of the boat. And that's really important. But once you're in the boat, you're secure, comfortable, ready to hang out, then you might notice the side panels. So the side panels look like a bay of cup holders. <laughs> they are much more than that. But yeah, you've got five cup holders on either side of the big side panels. You've also got a gel coat color matched insert. So this particular piece is built just like the boat itself and it follows the boat through production and it is your choice. You can match this color to whatever gel coat color we offer. You've also got, in this particular case, we've got Roswell speakers because this particular boat has the Coverfire 2.0 package in it. So it's got Roswell speakers throughout. You've also got a backlit Centurion emblem and it's etched with the Centurion logo. Really cool. The other piece that I like are these grab handles. Now we didn't just stick any grab handles in here. These grab handles match. They match the grab handles on the exterior of the boat, on the transom. They match the windshield stanchions in the helm of the boat. Everything was designed to go together. 
nothing was missed. This is another refinement that not only is it a great place to hold on in case somebody's doing a bat turn that's driving the boat, but it's also beautiful to look at. And that's one of the things that you'll find in the RI-265 is there's no corner cut, there's no refinement missed. This boat is a revolution innovated. So we talk about everything in the 2021 RI-265 being on purpose, being uh, something we meant to do. And you can see that with even the drop zone auto tower. So yes, the drop zone auto tower came out well before the 265, but you can tell these two systems were made to go together. I mean, they just look right. The drop zone auto tower has this water drop extrusion. So it's not just a plain tubed tower. It's got this ridge to it. And not only does that look really cool, does it match the other hard lines combined with arcs on the RI-265? It also adds a level of strength that other towers just don't have. And where you notice that strength the most is in how quiet it is. There's no rattle to it, whether you're in the boat on a rough day on the water or it's driving down the road on a trailer. This tower doesn't make a noise. It is stout. It's also beautiful. It's got color matched shields. So you can match your exterior gel coat on the tower. And you can even do a two-tone version of that. So adding two colors on the exterior tower shields. You've also got the opportunity to make it a black or a white tower, as well as add things like Coverfire 2.0, which is a new stereo system we're offering for 2021. And Coverfire 2.0 not only has an amazing sound to it, it looks really good too. It's tooled or its pieces are tooled to go with the drop zone auto tower. The Coverfire 2.0 has four eight inch horns this year. Two of them are, are firing back to the rider. Two of them are firing down towards the interior. You've also got six and a half inch mids that fire to the bow. You've also got this year brand new is a set of tweeters that are connected to the cover fire. They just add another level of clarity to this sound system that is amazing. But you'll notice each of these speakers is specifically angled to hit an area of the boat. And some, like the two I mentioned that are rear firing, are meant to hit the rider that's in tow. And they're all controlled independent so you can adjust the interior sound level without having to blow out the guy in the back and vice versa. So I can get the sound back there to my surfer or my wakeboarder without having to blow everybody out on the interior of the boat. Coverfire 2.0 is an amazing sound system. You've got to hear it to believe it. Roswell did an epic job with this particular sound system this year, and it's very different from years past. The other thing you can opt for on the drop zone auto tower is the bombshell rack. This rack looks massive and accommodating because it is. This thing can accept as wide as a 26 inch surfboard and even a surfboard that you designed yourself, paid a ton of money for, um, is your baby is going to be safe in these racks. This has some really cushy gator step on it that babies <laughs> those surfboards. It really caresses them. It doesn't create any pressure points to make dents or cracks in your boats. They're awesome to use. They're extremely versatile and robust and, uh, and they swivel, which is really nice. The other amenities you'll find on the drop zone auto tower are like the towel hangers that are up in the top. You've also got courtesy lights that are built into this tower. Not only the courtesy dome lights that you see up top, kind of like you have in your car when you open the doors, but we also have down firing LEDs that put light on the interior of the boat. You've got um, the most, I guess, most functional part of this tower is gonna be the button that makes it go up and down. Cause this is an auto tower. So it does go down with a button press. The button is located up here on the passenger side. You press the forward arrow to put the, the tower down. You press the rear arrow to put the tower back up. The tower goes down in about 14 seconds and it comes back up in about 17. 
It's a pretty functional tower. It's a pretty tower. It's a drop zone tower by Roswell, and it is standard on the RI-265. So we've talked a lot about the thoughtful refinements that have made their way into the RI-265, and there's no shortage of them as you get closer to the helm. In fact, as you get right in front of the observer seat, you may notice something a little different in the 265. It looks like there's kind of a cutout, like a notch in the lounge seating, and it, you're right, that's what that is. And it's a great spot to maybe put some shoes, flip-flops, kind of tuck them away so they're out of everyday traffic, you know, coming through here. But still, they've got a place where they're secure and they're not slip sliding around. But the other piece of this that is really cool is this seat. So this seat is standard in the RI-265. This seat allows for another rear-facing seat so it's it's an addition to the optional rear facing seat that you've got that'll be just in front of this on the ob side if you so choose but this allows for another person to be facing backwards towards the rider and you might think man that's going to be a short person well <laughs> not really so if i lift this up and put it to the side it extends this lean back so it doesn't just have to be for a kid <laughs> it can be for an adult and the great thing about this is when I don't have my shoes here or when I set them to the side as the observer I can still sit here have a place for my feet and then someone else can be sitting in front of me so it's almost like stadium seating in the boat which is nice and this is standard in the RI-265 so extremely functional. The other thing that's really cool is you start to get towards the helm of the boat and I appreciate more than anything as a mom is the trash can lid. I know, super boring, but I love this. This is one of my favorite things. I'd say this and the sun pad lounge seats, definitely my top two. And uh, I just like that everything has its place. And when I need to throw something away, I can throw it right here. I don't have to make this passenger get up so that I can access the trash can this way, which is still a possibility, but I don't have to do that. I can, I can put the trash away right here and be done with it out of sight, out of mind. I just have to remember to throw out the trash later when we get back to the dock. But other than that, those are two of my favorite things. And this nice little lean back is new for this year. And like I said, standard in the RI-265. So we talked about all of the billet pieces that are on the exterior of the RI-265, but there are also some really cool anodized billet pieces on the interior. My favorite is the glove box. The glove box is beautiful and uh, also made by PTM. The cup holders have billet surrounds as well, but probably my favorite part is it lights up. <laughs> I uh, love that Centurion lit logo. So cool. But you've also got a few things on the dash that are billet as well. The surrounds for the new Revo touchscreen. So these are side-by-side -side screens that work together when they need to, independent when they need to, but they are a revolution in and of themselves. They are 12 inches each. So huge, um, which just about everything about this boat is pretty big, but it adds for some functionality. It allows us to see a lot more and not have information piled on top of other information. So it's easy to point out. I've got quick access to what's my cat's position? What's my center tab? I'm gonna initiate quick surf from here. I wanna turn on quick launch. I've got access to all of this. I can see all of my engine system information, and then I can easily get to my surf screen. Now we talked a little bit earlier about quick surf. Quick surf, it really does help the boat lean a bit. It's not a lean that you can necessarily feel. It's more a lean that happens at the water level, but the boat you see here will show you kind of which way it's leaning. So you can, you can understand what side you're going to be surfing on. So you're always surfing on the side of the boat that's displacing that corner. So this is, this boat is leaning to the right. So this is set up to surf right. If I want to surf left, I just hit surf left. And then you'll see my Quick Surf Pro plates adjust to create that surf wave. It's just that simple. The other piece of this that's really important is it comes from the factory with this 70% setting on the Quick Surf tabs, both left and right. We believe that out of the box is a really great setting. 
but there are a hundred points of adjustment on either side. So I can tailor that surf wave and those plates exactly how I want to ride. Uh, that's important because when you take it out on the water the first time, you can load up all the ballast and hit surf and surf either side easily. But when you get really particular about your wave, you can adjust it to however you want to ride. You've also got access to all of your ballast here. So this shows the different positions of ballast in this boat. This particular boat doesn't have a bow bag in it. So you can get an additional ballast that's up here in the bow underneath the seats. This particular boat does not have that, but I can actuate each of these ballast areas by touching them on their own, fill and drain them independently, or I can fill all or drain all. The great thing is even when I fill all, because my two big tanks in the lounge are ram fill tanks, which fill in 90 seconds, I have to get up to speed just under 15 miles an hour to fill those tanks. Once I hit fill all, which we're on the trailer right now, so I'm not going to do it, but if I hit fill all, the dash will tell me increase your speed so you can fill your ram fill tank. So it's really a no brainer. I don't have to remember, hey, which tanks did I have to speed up to fill? And uh, it lets you know right away. I've also got all control over all of my lighting. So right now I have my courtesy lighting on. I can turn on my underwater lights, my speaker lights my tower lights, which I showed you some of the dome lighting in the tower before. I can turn on my cockpit lights, which are some speaker lights that are down here. And then my docking lights, which are those big powerful lights I showed you from Baja Racing earlier. They're about 4,800 ANSI lumens aside, and they are really bright. So I'll turn those off so I don't hurt anybody. <laughs> but it's all really easy to control. You've also got new for this year control of your stereo through the screen. So the Revo touchscreen, I can control stereo songs on my phone. I can control AM, FM, um, Bluetooth, any device. And it's really easy to control through the screen, which is nice. I can also control volume which is really nice. And I can not only control my volume here when I'm on the stereo screen, I can control my volume on the right as well. I can also see the song that's playing and I've got a really nice spot for my phone. And not only is this a great clamping spot for my phone, it charges the phone as well. If your phone is a newer phone and can accept a charge via the back, you can charge your phone um, with this clamping mount as well. So it's nice, I always have visibility over my phone and I always have control over my stereo through the screen on both sides, actually each screen. So after you got your tunes taken care of, got your phone where it needs to be, you know, what else do you need to be able to do in a boat? Well, there's something that you can't do in any other boat that you can do in an RI-265. That's monitor your fuel usage. Yes, you heard me right. So you've heard us talk for years about how fuel efficient these boats are, namely because of the running surface. Our running surface creates lift. It, um, it doesn't drag in the water. Our boats run very level, even when they're weighted to surf or wakeboard. And so they do not um, push against the water, essentially. They do not create resistance. So they don't, the engines don't have to work as hard to push these boats through the water. And you see that in the RPMs that we typically run when we're surfing, you're anywhere from 2,800 to 3,200 RPMs, even fully loaded. So what we wanted to do was kind of put our money where our mouth is and show you, show the owner of the boat what kind of fuel you're using on any given trip. And you can do that or see that, monitor that by hitting the trip button here on the dash. From here, I can see how long it takes me to get somewhere, the average fuel usage, the distance I traveled, the fuel I used, and the fuel rate, as well as the engine hours that I spent on that trip. So if I'm going, let's say I'm going across the lake and we're going to have dinner at a restaurant, uh, I can monitor how long it took me to get there, how long I traveled, how much fuel I used on the way. Or let's say I wanted to monitor not a trip, but a surf session. I'm going to surf for an hour. The 
fully loaded, I've got 10 friends with me, how much fuel am I using? And it'll tell you exactly right there. So we take all the guesswork out of it and you're gonna know how much more fuel you have until you're out of fuel, you need to go and refuel. You're also gonna understand just how efficient the RI-265 is on fuel. I love that piece of this particular screen. It's pretty awesome. Another really cool feature of this dash is the customization piece of it. So I'm a lights and color girl. I love that kind of stuff. So here I can change the color on my dash. I can make it match my boat. Let's say I want it to be gray, like the interior of this boat. Purple, I've got green, red, and blue. So I can choose whatever color I happen to be feeling at the time. I think I'm red today, so I'm gonna leave it on red. But this dash, it, like the rest of the boat, can really be customized to what you want it to be. It's incredibly functional. It's incredibly easy to see. The other piece of the dash that I didn't talk about because it, it's really the same on a lot of other Centurion models are our sport shifters. You still have those on the RI-265. On my left hand, I can control the Stinger wake plate. I can move it up. I can move it down just with a couple fingers and pulling the sport shifter towards me. On the right hand side, I can control my set speed, my zero offset speed. I can increase my speed by pulling the top lever uh, towards me. I can decrease my speed by pulling the top, the bottom lever towards me. But I never have to take my hands off the steering wheel or my eyes off the water to make those changes, which is really nice about the sport shifters. One thing that may look a little different to you is the steering wheel. The steering wheel that is standard in the RI-265 is new. Um, it's a Centurion wheel, and it is optional on other Centurion boats, but it's standard in the 265. Why? Because it looks like it was made to go with this boat. It's a beautiful wheel. It gives you enough visibility around it. It doesn't have a bunch of big panels built into it, so it blocks my view of the dash, even if it's tilted up. I really like that about it. It also looks nice. The shape of it is extremely clean. It goes with the lines of the boat, but probably the best part about this steering wheel is how wide it is. It doesn't feel like I'm grasping on to a little thin wheel. It's robust and it really feels like you have more control over the steering of the boat just from the way that you grip the wheel. The dash in and of itself is made for somebody that enjoys driving a boat but wants to drive a precision piece of equipment that's what this centurion dash is all about and honestly that's what the ri-265 is all about another feature made just for the driver is the cobra racing seat so this seat it's got a high back it hugs you on either side but it gives you the ability to kind of hang out swivel back around to the rest of the lounge and and feel comfortable even as the driver uh, aside from this seat, you've also got a heater here. I've got one snorkel that comes out here. This is a three outlet heater. The snorkel's really nice because you can put it under a towel and keep yourself warm. I've also got a heater outlet that is blowing right on me, the driver. And I've got another snorkel that's in the walkthrough. So your observer can have a snorkel on a really cold day as well. And when you put the wind block in, close the windshield, you've got a warm little area right here, even though we've got uh, Mother Nature sitting right here with us. The other piece of this particular area for the driver that I really like, oh, let's see, <laughs> is the ice chest access. So this boat comes standard with a 40 quart Grizzly cooler, and it has matching gator step on it. It goes into this enclosure. It fits in this enclosure really well. But what a lot of people forget is this enclosure that's built into the floor is an ice chest too. So I don't have to use the Grizzly right here on the floor. I can leave it at the house. I can put it in the back of the boat. I can lend it to a friend, but I can still use this particular enclosure. I can dump ice directly in it. It's got a drain in the bottom and uh, I can get cool drinks and good food right out of here if I want. Otherwise, you can use it for storage. Everything has its place and uh, it's all a lot of functionality in the 265. So another feature that I really appreciate about the RI-265 is 
storage. I know that's a total mom thing to appreciate, but I am a mom and this is the way it works. Everything should be put away. I don't want to be tripping over stuff. I don't want the kids tripping over things or stepping on things they shouldn't. I want everything to be put away, but I want it easily accessible. So there's storage underneath every one of these lounge seats. They're hinged and shocked. So not only can I open them up and close them easily? They stay open when I want them to. So I don't have to use both hands. As you know, you moms out there, we're normally doing something else with the other hand. So it's nice to just be able to open it up with one hand, throw what I need to in there and close it with that same hand. Uh, it's functional. It may seem a little silly to some people, but the shocked hinged storage in the lounge of the RI-265 to me is tops on my list. I mean, maybe right behind the, the sun pad lounge seats and the trash can and the stereo and the touch screen and the slide seat. Okay, no, maybe it's top five on my list, but it's still important. Uh, I love that about this boat. It really, the engineers have thought of everything and it's definitely as usable as it is beautiful. The RI-265, you got to check it out. Another really important feature to remember on the RI-265 is it has a full walkthrough bow. There is no ice chest in the center of this walkthrough. Um, and what I've got here is a filler cushion. So I can make this bow a lounge. It's got room for legs or room for other storage if you'd like, but it walks all the way through. There's nothing in your way in the RI-265. I like the bow to be a playpen. It's a little more comfortable. And this bow is huge. <laughs> it's extremely deep. You don't have to worry about the kids in this bow. As long as they're sitting on their bottoms and have their life vests on, um, they're gonna be comfortable and safe. You also have side panels in the bow, cup holders, two cup holders on either side. And you've got USB and 12 volt power points which is great for charging phones or maybe, um, I don't know, plugging in something else electronic that you gotta have in the boat. Um, you got that power even up in the bow. The other thing that the bow has that's really convenient is it has a step down just like the back of the boat. So if I'm boarding the boat from the bow, which the RI-265 has a great flat spot right on its nose to board the boat, I can step there and then step down and I'm not stepping on my upholstery. Again, I'm stepping on a fiberglass part that is tooled for that piece of the boat with gator step on it. So it's not slippery and it can take a lot of traffic. So the bow is comfortable, functional, looks great. And uh, I'm about ready to just take a seat. I think I'm just about done with these walkthroughs. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you've got to check out the RI-265. It's brand new for 2021. It's like no Centurion, really no wake boat you've ever seen. Visit your local Centurion boat dealer and experience this revolution innovated in the RI-265.